Hello YouTube, Dave here again, and today I'm going to be doing my review of the Shady Dragon Inn for the Dungeons & Dragons game. Now this is uh, the Dungeons & Dragons, what is generally referred to as the basic rules. Uh, so this is not like for Advanced Dungeons & Dragons or Zero Edition or uh, Third or Fourth or any of that. So this is the same version of D&D that you can find printed in the D&D Rules Cyclopedia. So what this is, this is a game accessory that is filled with pre-generated characters for the D&D game. It even, whoop, a little bit of glare there, as it says so right on the, uh, the front here. On the back, it reads, uh, Dungeons and Dragons pre-generated characters for D&D Fantasy Game, The Shady Dragon Inn by Carl Smith. Uh, the Shady Dragon Inn is a set of pre-generated characters for use with the Dungeons & Dragons game. Uh, this player's aid comes in two parts. Each character appears first in a section devoted to his or her character class. They appear again in the second section as members of a party. As a DM or a player, uh, you may use either or both sections. Over a hundred characters await you. Each character has a brief biography that will help you create backgrounds for your PCs or NPCs as needed. Also included is a rough physical description and a list of items owned by each character. The Shady Dragon Inn also contains the D&D game statistics for those special characters who are presented by figures in the D&D and AD&D toy line, which were put out by LJN. Uh, and yes, that LJN. Uh, and provides a tavern setting from which players may start adventures or gathering party members. Uh, so it just says down here, this player's aid is set for use with the Dungeons and Dragons Expert set, which contains expanded D&D basic rules. This player's aid cannot be used without the D&D basic and expert rules produced by TSR, and it came out in 1983, which is the same year that I was born. Um, so this is, when it says the expert rules, it's referring to the Moldvay version of the basic rules. I think the Menser D&D, uh, which became the Rule Cyclopedia, which in of itself was actually sort of just a, uh, a reprinting or just a, a reorganizing of the Moldvay basic rule set. But the, that's the one that, you know, this was actually uh, sort of designed with in mind. Uh, and the book itself, just looking on the inside, you see, you know, the first chapters or the first section is how to use this player's aid. Then you got fighters, magic users, clerics, thieves, dwarves, elves, uh, halflings, special characters, and the Shady Dragon Inn parties. Uh, so when this book says that it's filled with characters, it really is filled with characters. Uh, the how to use this book uh, section just goes over how to read the stat blocks. So you got like their stats, alignment, uh, their level, armor class, uh, hit points. And then they've got their uh, saving throws. Uh, which you have down there, uh, Thaco and like the rogue, the, not the rogue, the thief class would have all their thief abilities down there as well. Uh, inside the book you just have your whole list of characters. So there's a whole bunch of fighters here. They do illustrate each of them which is cool and they also provide a bit of a key here so you can see which fighter is which. For example, the uh, the first fighter is uh, Abdel Ar uh, Artone or Abel Arton, sorry, I'm trying to read through the viewfinder is a little bit difficult. So he is number one, which is here, which makes him this guy right there. <clears throat> so what's cool about this is, again, it goes over all their statistics. So he is, if you see the LV1, so he's level one, strength of 10, intelligence of five, wisdom 15, uh, constitution nine, dexterity eight, uh, Charisma 12. So uh, he wears chainmail and a shield, carries a broadsword and a dagger. Uh, Abel stands 5'9, weighs 155 pounds, and has brown hair and eyes. He was once the squire of a knight, but now is starting his own career. He is a dreamer, but has more common sense than brains. Uh, so the one thing about these is that the stats aren't necessarily that great. Uh, we then have Adrian uh, Bjorn. Doter, and now there are some great names in here, um, although some of them might be a little bit more difficult to pronounce. So she's got a Strength of 9, Intelligence of 8, Wisdom of 9, Constitution 9, Dexterity 8, and a Charisma of 16. She's got a, a Neutral Alignment, and keep in mind, in this rule set there are only three alignments, Lawful, Neutral, and Chaotic. She's level 2 with an Armor Class of 6, 14 hit points, <clears throat> and uh, her Saving Throws, uh, petrification and death 12. Uh, let's see here. 
Uh, magic wand is 13 uh, to save versus uh, stern tone, uh, stone turn to stone or paralysis 14 uh, and uh, save versus dragon breath is 15 she's got uh, save versus spells or magic staff of 16 and a thaco of 19. So Adrian wears chainmail, carries a spear, dagger and sword, stands 5 foot 10, weighs 140 pounds. She is slender and mild looking but has one fame as a guard. Adrian left her job as captain in a local baron's guard because it was not exciting enough. She tries to profit from all of her adventures and she is the one up here uh, with the spear. <clears throat> and I'm not going to go through and read all of them, obviously, but that's sort of the, the gist of how it works. So you've got a whole bunch of fighters, um, up to 23. So there's 23 different fighters available, again, all of varying levels. So, for example, we have uh, Sean Brightheart. Uh, he's level 6. You've got Ursula the Clever. Uh, she's level 8. Uh, do, do, do we have... Uh, do we have any higher level ones? Just add a quick glance. It looks like 8 might be... Oh, no, we got uh, up here. We have uh, Lancelin Openhand, uh, who is level 11, strength 17, so finally some good stats here. Intelligence 13, wisdom 14, uh, constitution of 7, which isn't very good, dexterity of 8, which isn't very good, and charisma of 9. Chaotic Alignment, level 11, armor class of 4, 60 hit points, that go of 10. Uh, or 9 or 7, plus 1, uh, slash, plus 3 versus Enchanted Creatures. Where's Plate Mail, Conical Helm, and Nose Piece. Uh, carries Polearm, uh, Broadsword, plus 1, plus 3 versus Enchanted Creatures. And a Dagger. Lancelin is brown-haired, clean-shaven, stands 6 foot 3, weighs 207 pounds. He spent many years in the Great Old Wood, and is said to have married an elf. Perhaps that is only a story to explain his changeable nature. Uh, he wears a red cape decorated with spread-fingered gauntlet as an emblem. He will work for anyone who meets his fees and will change employers if another one offers a higher fee. He openly scorns adventurers who are not mercenary, saying, I'm loyal to my paymaster. So anyway, there you go. Uh, so as we go through, of course, the next thing that we have are our magic users. And again, it follows pretty much the same formula. It gives them their list of spells as well. <clears throat> and then we've got our clerics. Now again, one of the interesting things about this version of Dungeons & Dragons is I think we only have the one uh, Ambrose the Celt. Um, but he is a level 1 cleric. And as you can see, he doesn't have any spells. So our second level cleric has a spell, which is Cure Light Wounds, but so clerics in this version of the game did not get spells at first level. And it just continues along that line. So again, I'm not going to go through and uh, necessarily look at everything in great detail, but it is filled with, uh, again, they're all uh, individually numbered from one all the way through. Oh, so we got our elves. So until we get, whoops, uh, up to our, before we get to our special characters, we have 105 ready-made characters uh, to go in this game, or in this book, I should say. Uh, so that's really, really cool. They're all of varying levels, so it's up to the Dungeon Master uh, how they want to, to use them. So you may want to have uh, players of similar levels uh, working together. It's So it's something that there will have to be a little bit of work put into. And then we've got our special characters. So these are the characters that came out as part of the action figure line. Uh, by LJN. So the first section that we have here, I believe, is all composed of the good characters. And most of them, I think, were either um, good or evil. And of course, the good typically had a lawful alignment, and the evil typically had a chaotic alignment, because again, good and evil wasn't actually part of the alignment system in this version of the game. <coughs> but we have uh, Mer uh, Mercyon the Cleric, who I believe is uh, this one here. Uh, doo -doo -doo. Yeah, so that's yeah, that's her there, Mercy on the Cleric. You have uh, Figgin the Halfling, who I'm assuming is this guy here because he's got no shoes on and those look like pretty hairy feet. Uh, Parale the Elf, who's clearly this one here. Elkhorn the Dwarf, uh, so you got him there. Now Elkhorn 
Honestly, whenever I see that name, it really sounds more like an elven name than a dwarven name to me. Um, since, you know, elk are creatures of the wild, and it just doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense for dwarves, but that's what they call them. Uh, then you have Ringerlin, the magic user, who's a level 7 magic user. And that's him right there. And then, of course, you have Strongheart, the fighter. Now, I had mentioned, or someone had mentioned that, um, and, and I'll just kind of spoil it here for a second. So, there, you know, there's an image of Warduke there. I've talked about him a few times in the past. Uh, <clears throat> there has been, I, I mentioned that Warduke was also in the Dungeons & Dragons animated series from the early 80s as well. And I had some people, or I, I don't know if it was some people, but one person said that they thought Strongheart was in the show. Uh, I haven't gotten to re-watching the entire series as of yet. I have it on DVD. Uh, but they thought that uh, the, re the representation of Strongheart was actually much more cowardly. And I believe they may be confusing um, Strongheart for a character in the second episode, I think his name was Sir John, who his whole shtick was that he was a knight who was a coward. And, um, you know, the people in the village that he was trying to protect were basically calling him out on it, and he kind of uh, gets his, you know, his courage at the end of the episode, of course, because, you know, that's, that's the whole arc of his character. But he was a cowardly knight, and I think a lot of people were confusing perhaps Sir John for Strongheart. I'll know more when I get to finish watching the uh, the series. But of course we also have our evil characters, so as I mentioned, I already talked about Warduke there, who's one of my favorites. Uh, you have uh, Foxfingers the Thief, who's this guy right here. You have Zargash the Cleric, who's this guy. Uh, Zarak the Thief is, I believe, him back there. Then you have uh, Skyla, the magic user, who is her, and uh, Kellek, the magic user, who is this guy back here. He also appears in the D&D animated series. I just haven't gotten to the episode that, uh, that he's in yet, but he and Venger, I guess, are rivals. Uh, you have Raven, the cleric, who is this one back here, who's her, and of course you have good old Warduke. And it gives all their uh, statistics, which is really cool. So if you had the LJN figures uh, growing up, uh, <coughs> and you wanted to use them <coughs> in the Dungeons & Dragons game, then you've got them here. Um, now for the most part, I think they all tend to be, I think the highest level one is probably, uh, oddly enough, it's not Kellek. Uh, I think it's Raven, actually. Raven's level 10. Foxfingers is, nope, Foxfingers the Thief is level 13. That's... I dare say the highest uh, of the iconic uh, evil characters there. And now we have the section which is just the characters, um, like low-level low parties basically. So if you want to use these, uh, the individuals in this book as another party of adventurers, then there are some um, pre-made parties here. Now a lot of these are kind of um, mixed up I think for the most part. Oh no, they're, they're not yet. So you got like low-level fighter party, High-level fighter party, um, low-level magic user party, high-level magic user party. It does, I think, start to mix them, uh, but you see they just have like the, the different uh, groups all together. So if you wanted, say, a group of elves together, you could have like a low-level elf party, and you could just use those characters there. Uh, and eventually they do uh, have like mixed, uh, mixed parties. So I think you would just kind of pick like one of each. And then finally we have the map of the Shady Dragon in itself. Now this is the print-on-demand version from DM's Guild. Uh, so therefore they just print the pages separately um, <clears throat> in the back. But if you were to pick this up, the original copy, uh, it's a fold-out map. Uh, I think it's a double-sided fold-out map. Uh, other than that, it's a map and there's something on the inside cover as well. But regardless, uh, the print-on-demand version has them included as pages bound into the product itself. So anyway, that is the Shady Dragon Inn. And this is one of the, the more interesting or cooler sort of uh, products that I've seen for, you know, accessories for Dungeons and & Dragons. And I think something like this has a lot of potential use for it. Now, if you're a Dungeon Master and you're looking to run a long-term game, then you really should be having your character, your players making their own characters. Uh, <clears throat> another thing of note is actually where, um, when it comes to like the level of the characters, 
Because this used the Moldvay version of the D&D Basic Rules, there were only two booklets out at that time for it. Um, and it wasn't until the Menser D&D system where it went beyond the Expert Rules. So the, the Basic Rules were levels 1 through 3, and the Expert Rules had uh, character progression of levels uh, 4 through, I think it was 14. So that's why there's nothing beyond that threshold in this book. Um, the best use for this, if you want your players to play characters from this book, would be for sort of a more impromptu or just one-off D&D uh, session, or just a short um, kind of uh, adventure that you plan on running maybe over the course of uh, two or three weeks or something like that. So you don't want to necessarily bog down a lot of time with character creation. So if you just want to run a single one-off game that's just a single scenario and then you don't really plan on going any further, <clears throat> um, or you're just doing something to fill a gap for your regular Dungeon Master, uh, then using the characters out of this is absolutely fantastic. The only thing that I wasn't a huge fan of was the fact that it didn't list their experience point totals, uh, what they had for current experience points in this book. So the, uh, the way to do it, I guess, would be to assume that they have the minimum experience for the level that they are, which is fine, but it still would have been nice to have seen the actual amount of experience points that they had. Uh, it's also really cool that they included those special characters from the LJN line of figures, uh, just because, you know, they were just really kind of cool looking. I mean, you know, by today's standards, they're pretty primitive looking as far as action figures go, but there's still quite a bit of charm to them. I would still love to find a, a copy of the War Duke one because it just looks so cool. Uh, so again, this is a really, really cool product. Uh, if you're looking to pick this up and you want to use the map, so if you're going to get this from DM's Guild, for example, and you actually want to use the map of the Shady Dragon in itself, because it is a nice map of the, uh, of the inn, uh, then you can absolutely do so. But what I would recommend, because I don't think it's a good idea to start like taking pages out. Um, now, they do have it so that they are all separated if you wanted to cut them out. But you can also get the a bundle with the printed version as well as the PDF. And if you do that, then you can just print off the individual pages that make up the map, which is something that I kind of wish I had done, and I might try to see if I can track down a copy of the PDF just for the purposes of printing off the, uh, the map if they have it scanned similar to how they did it here. At the end of the day, if you are going to be collecting uh, a like the... Dungeons and Dragons basic expert uh, system or the rule cyclopedia and you just want to have a few handy accessories to go with it uh, and you considering maybe just running a quick game just to see how it runs or how it feels then this would be a great product to pick up alongside of it because again you can just have the players pick a character of an appropriate level from this book and then you can just run the system. Uh, I think it's a really cool product. I love the idea behind it. Um, I'm glad that I have it in my collection. It was one of those things that as soon as I saw it was available print on demand, I had to have it. And uh, it took me a while to wait until I actually got the uh, the D&D Rule Cyclopedia before I felt comfortable enough reading through all of the stat blocks to kind of understand <clears throat> how things worked. Like when I first got it, I was kind of confused as to why the first level cleric was missing a spell. But now I kind of understand that that's the way that the system was done. So again, if you're looking to collect uh, the D&D basic system, or get the D&D Rule Cyclopedia, then I consider this to be a worthwhile purchase. It's not essential. I wouldn't say that you need this in your collection if you want to have and run the Rule Cyclopedia version of D&D, but it is a great resource to have uh, handy. So there's a lot of things that a DM can pull out of that. And there's some really cool little descriptions of the characters in here, uh, along with some very uh, interesting names like Crispin Kalotol, uh, Dorcas Deep Delver, Brandywine, Barefoot, it's just, again, some really, really cool stuff in here, and I think it's a great accessory. So anyway, that was my flip through and review of the Shady Dragon Inn. If any of you watching the video have this in your collection, let me know what you guys think of it. Uh, if you've used any of the characters out of there and your thoughts, uh, until then, thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and we will see you next time. Take care. Funding for this channel is provided by my awesome supporters over on Patreon. Uh, so everyone who has donated to that, uh, from the bottom of my heart, thank you very much. Even a dollar a month helps immensely, and without your guys' support, this channel would not be possible. I want to provide special thanks to Kennedy S., David L., 
Will W, Michael L, the Twisted Tentacle Inn, and Roll Stats for their generous donations. Thank you again to everyone who's contributed, and all of you make this possible.